Happy New Year everyone! In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can get from this to this wow. using Iclone 8 and the free video editing software DaVinci Resolve. Ah yes, I know what you're thinking. Why Iclone? Why not use Unreal Engine or Blender or any other software that can create epic, high quality, perfect renders? Unfortunately, I have this um, addiction to my iClone Lutz package and they are not exportable. <laughs> we are stuck with iClone, so let's begin! For the purpose of this tutorial, I've created a simple character animation and camera movement. I have no explanation for it, so moving on! Step 1. Lutz. You can find them in your stage tab, then post effects and finally the loot folder. Ok, I've done plenty of videos about loots, so I don't want to repeat myself and waste your time. I'm using the same settings as in my previous video, so for more details feel free to check it out. But what if you don't have the 200 plus loots pack? <gasps> First of all, there are plenty of amazing loots that come free with Icon 7 or 8, such as my two favorites, Morning Effect and Desert Sun. You also have Adjust Cover and Film Style folders that offer plenty of variations. And your second option is to check out cover grading tutorials in your video editing software. Ok, ok, let's get back to the tutorial. Important thing, I have the ambient occlusion setting deactivated. That way my shadows are less detailed, which enhances the cartoony style if that's what you're going for. Ok, so step 2. Depth of field. As you can see, the background is kind of too sharp. Like a knife. We want the focus to be on the character, right? There are different ways to achieve that using contrast, colors, directional lines and blurry backgrounds. The more important something is in the scene, the sharper it is supposed to look, while everything else fades into the distance or becomes blurry. Select your camera, make sure you are at the first frame of your scene, go to Modify tab and activate the depth of field. Select Pick target and I drop your character's face that would create a keyframe in your timeline. But since your character and camera are moving, you'll need to create a few more keyframes by eye dropping the face of your character in its different locations. Now let's improve everything. Activate view dock regions and unlock the near and far effect in each one of your keyframes. As you can see, everything that is red is in focus. While the more pink, purple and blue things get in the foreground, the blurrier they get. In the background, it goes from yellow to green to blue. Meaning everything blue will be extra blurry. To change these colors, you can use the transition region sliders and the blur strength is also adjustable. Easy peasy. Step 3. The rendering. Many different options here. I'm no expert, but for some reason, if there is no sound or voiceover, I prefer to render everything as a PNG sequence, otherwise it's an MP4. I select the 30 frames per second, Ultra HD and last but not least, activate high quality DOF, in case you're using any. And we're ready to export. What is anti-aliasing thingy? Hmm, I clone anti-aliasing? Of course, we are going to use the anti-aliasing thingy, highest quality possible. And then I finally discovered why people complain about waiting for hours for their renders. Ok, after nearly 5 hours, my render is completed. And the last step, DaVinci Resolve, are you ready? Open the program, go to your edit window, down at the bottom, select all the PNGs and drag them to this place over here. The program will recognize the files as a movie sequence. Drag it to your timeline and BAM! Your animation is ready to be operated on. Go to File, Project Setting and adjust your timeline resolution to the Ultra HD. 
However, feel free to keep the 24 frames per second for a more... Uh, I don't know, I just like it better. 30 frames per second was too quick. With the scene you want to operate on selected, move on to the cover window. Yay, look at the notes! Alt S to create a new knot, Ctrl plus D to disable it. You can also delete it if you don't like it. The numerous cover wheels are used for cover grading. In case you're not satisfied with your looks, feel free to make any additional changes. But since I am satisfied with mine, I'll just play with the contrast. Let's push it a bit further for the sake of this video and for the sake of the children who like colorful stuff. Alt plus S to create a new knot. Go to the Curves tab and let's try to create a very slight S curve. Ctrl D to disable the knot to see the difference. Mm, yeah, it's better. Let's do another one. Create a new knot, go to the circle icon and then click on the other circle. Adjust the shape and then go to the Curve Editor again. Try to make the scene darker. Yep, you guessed it, the circle is actually a mask. Go back to the circle tab and invert the selection. Now you have a framing effect, also known as a vignette. You can play with the impact and the feathering by adjusting the size of the two circles. And no, it doesn't have to be in the middle. You can have different effects, different shapes, anything you want. And lastly, I add a note for prism blur effect. It's a mix between a radial blur, a vignette and something called aberration that creates a red and blue outline of some of the shapes. I really like it, but it's a question of your personal taste. Feel free to skip some of these steps. Here is the before and after and the final result. A tiny bonus tip, in this scene for example, I activated the fog effect which created this bluish blur in the background. And another bonus tip, for us video editing newbies, find some cool dust particle effect either from YouTube or from a paid website like Production Crate and change the composite mode to screen. That's the easiest way to add floating dust particles. Like and subscribe if you feel like it and Happy New Year!